You hear any interference from the, the fan or no? Uh, no, sounds good. Awesome. What's going on, everybody? How are you doing? I'm here with Josh, Joshua Crisp, and welcome to the workshop. This is workshop video number one of four. So welcome, everybody, and really excited for this video because we're going to be diving into step number one of the process, which is the product research when it comes to building your Amazon business. So I'm going to wait for everybody to come on in really quick. And if you are able to hear and see us, let us know in the comments. And, you know, I couldn't think of a more appropriate background than having us on the <laughs> beach right now because everyone's stuck inside. Although I am here in Miami and people are so crazy out here that they all flock to the beach and then they shut the beach down the next day because nobody was respecting the the social distancing. So bringing everybody to the beach right now, how you feeling, man? Catching the tan? Yeah, absolutely, man. It, it's it's uh, lovely seeing the beach. I haven't seen that in a while. So it's, it's definitely uh, some some nice vibes, man. Awesome. We got free e-bikes. E-bikes? What's an e-bike? I don't know, but I like the sound. <laughs> no, free bikes. Okay. I was like thinking e-books and e-bikes. What's going on? Saying I'm in Miami too. What part of Miami are you from? We got Stephen Shore saying, I can see you. I want to know right now, who's excited to learn from Joshua? Joshua literally... What was it over five years? How long ago was it when you were working as a temp? Oh, God, 2014. 2014. So. so it was like about over five years ago. This guy was literally freaking almost homeless, living in a 400 square foot apartment, dead broke. How many real estate investment properties did you have back then? Oh, back then, zero. I could barely pay the rent on my one bedroom apartment, man. And how many Amazon, how much money were you making on Amazon back in 2013, 2014? Oh, dude, nothing, nothing at all. Zero. Zero. This guy literally no, no. went from freaking nothing to just absolutely killing it. So really excited here. And I, I see a lot of familiar faces who came in who were on our uh, live show the other day. And I just want to know who here is excited to be with Josh. Who's, who's excited to be on the beach right now, catching the tan, learning some information. We got Carissa Powell saying, let's go, Muhammad saying, I am the same as him. So it looks like Muhammad was in a similar position as you as well. Kimberly saying, great backdrop. Beach is crazy in Fort Pierce off and on. We got Carissa from North Carolina. We got the Financial Freedom Network. What's going on, brother, from the UK? We got John Paul Joshua saying, I'm stoked. We have nice so name. many people. Yes, I like that name. <laughs> we have so many people. We got New York in the house. I we think I've seen the Netherlands. We got people all around the world in here. I thought I'd see Netherlands in here, man. All there it over is. the it's world. It's 1 a.m. in the all Netherlands. over the world. So wow. I want to know right now, who is excited to learn the million-dollar Amazon product research method from Josh? I mean, again, like I already recapped, he was making $7.25 an hour back in 2014, was dead broke. You know, he told me stories behind the scenes of just, you know, how miserable you were and you just felt like, I don't know. It just seems like sometimes, you know, we're not, we're not making enough money and we're not going after a future. We feel like we're not good enough. Right. And you were going through a lot of that stuff where you're like, how do I get started? You were seeing people have success, but you're like, I don't know if I can do it. How am I going to do it? And this guy figured it out. So I want to know right now who is excited to get started. So, you know, as the comments start to pour in, I, I want you to kind of share with people maybe a little bit more about yourself. Where, like, where are you right now in your business? How much are you doing in sales? What was your life like before you started this business? And we'll transition into, you know, the content for workshop workshop number one today, which is how to research your product, which is the biggest thing. So I'll let you take the mic, brother. Yeah, so I appreciate it, man. Glad to be here. And uh, like Steve was saying a couple of years ago, I was nowhere near where I am right now. And I know a lot of you guys are at a point where you're getting started in your entrepreneur journey or you guys are trying to find something to get started, the catalyst, the vehicle to make some money, right? And uh, several years ago, I was in the same position as you. And I actually stumbled upon the same YouTube channel you stumbled upon, which was Steve's channel. And at the time, I was making minimum wage, which was $7.25 at the time. You know, I was a high school dropout, no diploma, no degree, couldn't get a job making over minimum wage. In fact, I couldn't even get a real job. I worked at a temp agent uh, where they went and just found jobs that nobody else wanted to do. And I worked for a company called Spartan Staffing. So at the time, I was just hustling, trying to find ways to make money, flipping stuff on eBay. Um, a lot of you guys can relate to that. And I stumbled upon Amazon. Fast forward to today, guys, things have changed. I went from barely being able to pay rent in my one-bedroom apartment to now owning 40 units, 40 apartments uh, in that same area I grew up in. We just got accepted offer on 51 more units. 
and we went from you know being grateful to flip uh, a used uh, Tommy Hilfiger shirt or, or Polo Ralph Lauren shirt just to come up with some extra cash to put food on the table for my wife and my two boys to now doing eight figures in gross sales. And we do about three and a half million per year with our three different uh, brands, 12 different SKUs. So guys, it doesn't take hundreds and hundreds or thousands of SKUs like other uh, business models uh, that you can sell on Amazon. You can literally get a lot with a little bit, right? So less is more with private label. It's all about going big. It's all about sustainability. So I'm super excited to share with you guys how to get started. And, you know, we have a slogan with the AMZ form that's your one product away. So hopefully we can show you guys how to find that one product. So out of all the business models that are out there right now, why are you so excited about this one in particular? And why are you so excited about Amazon and the future of Amazon? For the people who are just coming in, maybe coming from the eBay world or coming from the Posh Mark world, you know, there's a lot of folks who are looking to scale their business. They want to have a business that allows them to work from home. That doesn't always require them to be going out there and always hustling to make that next dollar. So share a little bit about why you believe and why like you invest so much in this, you know, opportunity. Yeah. So I, I love Amazon and uh, private label specifically, which is the model that we use to sell products online. There's a few different ones. There's wholesale, there's arbitrage, and then there's private label. And I love eBay as well. Like I said, I was struggling. I didn't have anything. There's times where we were literally putting garlic on ice cubes. We were eating white rice with beans. Like we were struggling. And I was always hustling. I love the hustle. I've always been hustling since I was young. I was selling candy in middle school. I was selling um, uh, Pokemon cards when they came out. I was always hustling stuff. I always had this hustle um, ambition about me. And when I met my first mentor, which was my wife's um, boss at the time, I was just telling him about what's going on and just seeking wisdom from him to try to change my life. He was an older uh, businessman, not like crazy rich, but I looked at it as him being successful because he didn't work for someone else. He worked for himself, had a little business, was able to own his time. And he was always like, Josh, you're a hustler. Um, but if you want something that's going to last, if you want su something sustainable, you have to find a way to have your money work for you without you working for it. And it kind of like I had an epiphany, uh, Steve, because my dad was a contractor and he busted his face his entire life. Matter of fact, he's going to be 76 years old and he still works to this day. And he always told me when I was young, he said, Josh, find a way to work with your brain, not your back. Well, I got bad grades. As a matter of fact, I dropped out. I have a ninth, ninth grade um, education. So how do I use my brain without having an education? <laughs> so my mentor telling me that, my dad telling me that, and then me stumbling upon Amazon, I was already hustling stuff on eBay, but that's what I was doing. I was hustling. I was going to the thrift store. I was trying to chase coupons and stuff like that. And it wasn't sustainable and it was a hustle. So I was always chasing that. How do I have my money work for me without me working for it? How do I get out of that hustle, even though I love it? So when I stumbled upon private label, I was like, oh my God, we can sell these, uh, we can sell products, literally products that people need that they're going to continue to buy without having to go out and chase them, right? And instead of doing the wholesale approach where we sell big name brand products and just make a small cut, we could own the entire piece of the pie. So instead of having to deal with, you know, middlemen and so on and so forth and the buy box and all this stuff, we could literally be that main source. So that's what really attracted me. And I fell in love with the, the aspect that you can make money 24-7, 365 with this business model without having to hustle. And that's why I generally believe that it's one of the, the best business models. My two main businesses, Steve, as you know, is private label with Amazon and real estate because those two businesses operate income, tw generate income 24-7, 365. So I'm all about automation um, and income coming in, baby. That's so cool. And you know, what's really awesome about this workshop is it's a four part workshop. So if you guys haven't already signed up for the workshop to get notifications, I believe there's some links down below. The first link is actually a webinar that we're hosting on May 12th, which we'll talk about later. So if you guys get a chance, sign up for that now. I'll talk more about it later. But if you think this workshop, this workshop is going to be four days, it's 100% free. Literally, we're going to just go above and beyond. But if you think you guys are going to get so much value, you're going to want to go to the workshop. So check out the links down below. But the first step, the first step to starting an Amazon private label business, which we're going to cover today in workshop number one. So make sure I do want to stop right now and say to everyone watching, do not watch this passively. Don't watch passively. Get out a pen, get out a pad, open up Google Docs, turn all your stuff off, your TV, make sure you're distraction free. Exactly and take notes because this workshop is going to be all about phase number one, right? Or step number one, which is the research phase. And we were actually having a conversation about this. And this is a big, big, big mistake that a lot of people make 
is they don't get the research right. So that's what we're going to cover, how to research, why research is important, the tools and software, how to analyze products. Again, we're only on for an hour. So if, if you're getting a lot of value from this, which I hope you will, make sure you sign up for the webinar I'll link down below. But let's talk about the research phase right now, because this is step number one. If you do everything right, step two, three, four, five, but if you get this one step wrong, you're done. You're screwed. You're out. You're, you're, you're toast. This is the foundation, right? I wish I could give some analogies, but it's almost like if you're building a house, if, if you don't pour the, the cement, if you don't get that foundation built, all what you build upon that, there's going to be a windy day. There's going to be something that happens. You're going to be, you're just, you're done. So let me hand it off to you. Let's talk a little bit about what the research phase is. And maybe you could give some examples of maybe some of the products or not the specific products, but like your mindset in terms of how you first got started because you failed a couple of times and now, and then transition over to like some, some principles to researching uh, products, especially for beginners. And then we'll go into your screen and we'll, we'll really dive deep. Okay, absolutely. So yeah, the business works, um, works pretty much around your product. Like Steve said, the most important component to this business is finding that product. So, so many people, especially newbies, when they're starting out, they start out um, backwards. They want to start finding products that they're passionate about. So a lot of ladies, I see a lot of women getting started and they're passionate about beauty. They want to get into the beauty space. A lot of guys who are super passionate about um, working out and stuff like that, they want to get into supplements or workout gear. And I always tell people first and foremost with this business, don't make data-driven decisions, Make or excuse me, don't make emotional-driven decisions, make data-driven decisions. So we're going to kind of show you how to find the data, what data you want to look for to find and identify these products, and then how to verify and validate that these products are indeed going to do well. So, And we'll be breaking down and showing you guys step-by-step -step how to do this, but a few things that you want to take into consideration when finding that perfect product. Number one is seasonality. So there's um, a fully seasonal products and then there's semi-seasonal products. So a fully semi, semi, um, fully seasonal, that's a tongue twister, fully seasonal <laughs> product is going to be like a pumpkin carving kit or a set of Christmas lights. So Christmas lights are going to sell in November, December, right? Pumpkin carving kits would sell in September, October. That's a fully seasonal product. So it's not going to sell 24-7, 365. Our goal is to find these products that people are going to buy 24 uh, 7, 365, like this lint roller. People are going to use this irregardless if they're in Miami like Steve or they're in Chicago or wherever they're at. People it's need like to evergreen. Them. What's that, brother? It's, it's evergreen. It doesn't just sell really hot for a short period of time. And then you're sitting here like, well, I need my income to come in. The bills still need to get paid. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's that's the uh, that's the um, the products that are fully seasonal. Now, semi seasonal products would be a pool float. So pool floats aren't going to sell January through December in all of the states in the United States. But guess what? California, Florida, and Texas are three of the largest states in the United States. So people who live in those states are going to be buying pool floats all year long. So a semi seasonal product is not as uh, not as bad as a full sem a full seasonal product. But the best are those products that have no seasonality, which is going to be products that people, irregardless of where they live during the um, during the season, they're going to buy your products. So the way we do this is by going to Google Trends. And I'll show you guys how to do this in just a hot second. Um, we go to Google Trends, which is a free tool. And when we type in the name of our product, you're going to be able to see a historical chart. And it's going to show you throughout the year when people are buying, when people are not buying. So we'll dive in and I'll share, share that with you guys in just a hot second. Next is going to be, we want to make sure that um, the product is not a trending product. So again, we uh, use the same free resource, which is Google Trends. And we type in the name of our product and we're looking at the historical sales. So on a month to month, year to year basis, does this thing have volatility? Meaning, is it going up and down, up and down, up and down? Or is it nice and horizontal? Mm -hmm. Meaning that this thing is selling every single day, every single month. Like Steve said, we don't want to make, we don't want a one hit wonder. We don't want money coming in just during a specific time of the year. We want this thing selling 24 seven, 365. So like one of my top selling products that I've had that's been bringing in revenue for the last several years is a microfiber unisex baby hooded towel. So it doesn't matter where you live. doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you're in California, Miami, Chicago, New York, every single day, every single season, people are going to need products like this. So you need to be asking yourself, what are products that people are going to need that are not trending? Um, another thing with trending products, I don't know if any of you guys have kids. I've got two boys, uh, Jeremiah and Luis. They're younger. And about a year ago, 
I had fidget spinners all around my house, which are these little things you like you hold and you spin. It looks like a little triangle and you spin it. It's like a fidget toy. And I had different sizes. I had metal. I had plastic, ones that lit up. And they go, oh, dad, can I get another fidget spinner? And then like six months after that, it died. And now I can't find one. Like I genuinely wanted to play with one the other day and I couldn't find it. So we don't want those trending products because just as fast as they skyrocket, they usually nosedive. So we want products that are going to be what's called sustainable, meaning that they're going to sell 24-7, 365, like computer uh, computer boards or um, mouses. These aren't trending. People need these products. So number one is seasonality. Number two is trending. We want to make sure it has depth of market. Number three, we want to make sure that we're making money. So another free tool and resource that we can show you guys is um, the FBA calculator. So there's different FBA tools out there. Some are free, some are paid, but Amazon actually has their own FBA calculator inside of Seller Central. So if you go and you plug in these numbers, let's say that we're doing the uh, lent roller. We're doing this lent roller. And... Um, we find out that people are selling this product for five bucks, right? I'm just throwing numbers out there. If we put in five bucks for the MSRP or what people are selling this product for, and we go to Alibaba.com, which is where we find our products, find our suppliers to make our products, and we see we can get this for a dollar, we put the, the uh, manufacturer cost or the COG, which is cost of goods in, which would be a dollar. Now, there's four dollars left, and the FBA calculator is actually going to show us like, okay, this is how much Amazon gets, this is how much the logistics cost, so on and so forth. And we can actually see what our net margin is. So our net margin is the total cost of goods, the shipping, the cost of goods, Amazon's fees, all of your fees subtracted from the what you get it from and what you're going to sell it from. And the difference that's left over is your net, which means what you keep. So we like to see nothing less than 30%. If you guys can be at 33%, every three products you sell, you double your money. And that's how we make money, guys, is by doubling our income. Um, and that's what we look for. So those are three of the biggest things that we look for when we're verifying and validating products. Of course, there's a few other things like size. There's two different main products that you can get. So the easiest way to explain this would be um, the lint roller, which is going to be a standard size. That's size number one. And then you have the chair that I'm sitting in, which is an oversized product. So standard size products are going to be smaller. Therefore, they're going to be less expensive to source, less expensive to manufacture, less expensive in reference to logistics costs uh, associated with Amazon fees. So you need to think about that. And irregardless, if you're searching on Amazon or you're using a tool, you can literally just click a button and it'll, it'll say standard or oversized, which I'll show you guys in just a hot minute how we do that. So those are a few of the things that we're looking for um, when we want to launch these products. So that's cool. So with, with your business model of private label, it's very similar to what a lot of us are doing because a lot of us are going to retail stores, we're going to thrift stores, we're going to garage sales, we're going to estate sales. And what we're doing is we're looking for an undervalued product and then we're bringing it to eBay or Amazon to sell for a profit. And it sounds like you're doing the same thing, but the only difference is you're not going to a thrift store or a garage sale. You're going on Alibaba.com, which is I think Alibaba is even bigger than Amazon, right? Yeah, Alibaba is huge. huge. It's a multi-billion dollar company. So you go there, you search for the product, you find it. And then obviously there's things that we're going to be talking about because there's fees and shipping and different things, but you're finding it undervalued there. You're having it shipped to you and then you're then bringing it to the Amazon warehouses and selling it. Awesome. I'm looking in the comments right now and there's a question that came in from uh, Renee asking, does, does Google Trends tell you if the market is already saturated, which is a great question. Yeah, so Google Trends will tell you uh, a few things. So you can kind of see if the uh, product is saturated through Google Trends, um, but there's a few other things that we want to do to see if that market, uh, that marketplace or that product or category is um, saturated by looking at the amount of sellers. So the easiest way to tell if a um, category or a product is saturated is to directly see how many sellers are selling that product and look at the amount of sellers and the amount of monthly sales to the amount of reviews that they have. And we get that information directly from Amazon. But Google Trends is going to show us some really neat information. They're going to be able to show us historical search trends and historical data off of search, which will show you is this product increasing in popularity at a sustainable growth? Um, has it been sustainable over the last five, 10 years? Like if you go and you look at a cane on there for the last 20, 30 years, a cane, people have been buying it the same amount. If you go on there and you look at um, Amazon in reference, 
It's been sustainably growing like this. If you go and look at the fidget spinner, it skyrocketed, then it nosedived. So we mainly use Google Trends for seasonality in reference to does this product sell during every single month throughout the year, as well as depth of market, meaning how many years has this product been selling? Because it's going to show us, even though Google is not owned by Amazon or vice versa, Google is the largest search engine and Amazon is a search engine. So we can literally go and we can get direct um, data from Google search engine saying, hey, this is when people started buying it. This is when it start, uh, came to the marketplace. This is when people buy it the most during that time of the year. So we're able to establish, you know, is this a trending product, which means does it have depth of market or not? Yeah. Is this a seasonal product? Meaning is it volatility during the season or during the 12 month calendar year? Or does it sell consistently throughout the year? And those are the two main reasons um, that we use Google Trends. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, to add on to that, I was at a conference before all this craziness went down about a month and a half ago. And uh, there must have been maybe 60 or 70 Amazon sellers there. I spoke there and uh, so did my, my buddy uh, Avery, who's an Amazon bookseller. We spoke there and there was a private label guy there that we met and we were talking to him behind the scenes. And we were actually talking about how a lot of people they stay away from private label because they think it's too saturated. They see like so many different, you know, they see like sometimes like a really popular product and they see multiple sellers on it. A lot of people get scared, but there's so many opportunities with competition. Competition is also a sign that there's money to be made. And he was telling me, and I'm curious what your thoughts are on this. He was telling me, Steve, you know, when you launch a product, you don't want to be the only fish in the sea. You want other sellers to be there because that's proof of concept. And there's so many like customers and buyers, you don't, you want to, you want to have a concept that works. You don't want to be that only guy trying to see if it works or not. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that, but he was doing, I think well over like 25,000 a month. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely, man. You don't want to reinvent the wheel and nobody wants to be first or last to the marketplace. So um, everybody has different metrics or, you know, speculations on what saturation is, but in, to simplify things for people that don't know what saturation is, Basically, the million dollar question is when you're selling on Amazon, can I get into this product without getting slaughtered? Is it so saturated, meaning is it so competitive that I can't get in and, and get a piece of the market share? So I'll, over, I'll undersimplify it and make things super simple for you guys. I look at saturation in reference to, um, am I able to sell this product? Is there more supply than there is demand? And saturation to me is when we look at the data and we look at the trends and we look at all the data and we see that there's more supply than there is demand. When supply overturns demand, then you have saturation. And to be completely honest, saturation isn't the difficulty in reference to starting a brand or starting a, a company on Amazon that newbies have to worry about. I would say difficulty, right? Because if you look at it, you can launch any product on Amazon as a private label product. You can go into supplements and you can launch a supplement. You can go into skincare and launch a skincare product. It's not the saturation that you have to worry about. It's the complexity and the competition, which means that you just have to spend more money. Every product can be ranked and every product can be profitable. But where we make a lot of money and whereas newbies who don't have a ton of money, like when I was starting out, we don't have a ton of money to get started with. We want to find these products that have high demand, low competition, that really have that blue ocean. We don't want to go into a red ocean. You can go into a red ocean and bigger sellers with bigger budgets can go in there and make it work but there's less margin. It's more competitive. It takes longer to profit. So I wouldn't necessarily say saturated. I would say com uh, competitiveness. So we're looking for these products that have a majority of these sellers where they're selling 300 plus units per month being 10 units per day. And where a majority of them have under 200 reviews, have a hundred reviews, 150 reviews. And that's one of the ways that we can um, gauge competition. So Everybody has, that's like the decade old uh, controversy of PC versus Apple, right? Everybody has their different metric on saturation, but I look at it like that, Steve, like, Hey, if you look at it, Got everything it. Makes sense. saturated, everything has demand. It's the level of competitiveness. So we want those products where we can get in there, we can get them ranked, start getting that small victory, that small win, start generating some income within that 10 to 12 weeks without having a bloodbath, right? So that's what we look for. Yeah. And another great tip as well that I learned from one of my mentors, Greg Mercer, who I know is one of your great friends. And uh, he actually uh, created the software that we're actually going to talk about that, you know, kind of uh, shares how you go through your process. But he told me, Steve, he said, you know, another thing to look at 
on top of competition is, hey, where can I go in and improve the product? Let's improve the product. Let's go and let's read all the, let's, let's take a look at a product. Maybe there's a market that's like super freaking, maybe like the garlic press, right? It's like super crazy saturated. And that's probably not a market you'd want to get into because it's like ridiculously saturated. But what if you could take that garlic press after reading all the comments and going through all the product comments and you notice that 40% of the people are saying, I wish this came in a set of two, or I wish this came in a different material. I wish this came in pink with a flamingo on it. I don't know. I'm just making things up, right? I don't know. I'm on the beach right now, so I'm getting crazy. But imagine getting into a market that's overly saturated that you wouldn't want to get into, but then you improve upon it. You've also, you've like almost created a new market. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the ways that um, when we're looking at launching a product or improving our current product, that's one of the main things we do is we do the data uh, data-driven research. Like I said, you don't want to lead by emotion. You want to lead by data. So many people ask themselves what they want to see in a product instead of going directly to the marketplace and seeing what the marketplace wants. So the easiest way to understand what consumers want is to go see what they want. And the easiest way to do that is by looking at the reviews. And when you look at the reviews on Amazon, uh, Steve, you can change them from newest meaning um, what people are saying most rel relatively to right now. You can also change it by negative one star. You can change it by five stars. So what I tell people is don't change what's working, right? If it's not, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So things that people love, write that down. And the simplest way to do this, I wish I had something to draw on, is to create a T. So if you take a piece of paper, you create a T. On one side, what do people love? On one side, what do people hate? So when I'm launching a product, I'll go look at all of the competition on the first page. I'll click five-star rating, and I'll start to see the similarities. What do people love? What are they craving about? What is it that they, um, that they love about the product? And I'll write that down under what people love. Then I'll go on all the competitors, and I'll, I'll change it in chronological order from one star on. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and see everything that they dislike, everything that they hate, everything that was wrong with it. Were products uh, arriving smashed or broken because of the packaging wasn't strong enough? Do people wish it had a function? Do people wish it had an accessory? Do people wish it was more durable, more longer, more smaller? What is the things – because they will tell you why they're leaving that negative review. And no one just says, hey, I don't like this brand, so that's why I'm leaving a one-star review. It's always a pain point. So I look for the things that people love. One side, I make sure I incorporate all that. On the other side, what do people hate, which are the pain points? And I'm writing all the similarities down. And when I go to the so supplier – I'm saying, hey, this is what people don't like. This is what they like. I want all of this in my product. But everything they're saying that they don't like, let's improve on that. And then like the misconception that people have is they're going to make money or they're going to become successful by undercutting. So again, we don't want to get into the red ocean. The red ocean is um, competition with price or competition with quantity. So many people, their strategies, when they get started, they want to undercut price or over um, add more units. So in reference to like Steve said with the garlic press, if we were getting in the garlic press, which is saturated, I failed that product. Don't do the garlic press. But <laughs> someone may think, okay, if everyone's at $19.99, let me launch this at $14.99. Or if everybody's doing one unit, let me sell two units for the same price. That's a bloodbath because there's always going to be someone with more money who's a larger brand who can have smaller margin, who has deeper pockets that can come and do the same thing. And by the time two, three, four, five, six, seven sellers come and do that, margins are very thin. So I love doing the completely opposite. I'm usually one of the highest sellers in the marketplace. And the reason why I can do that with no resistance is because I focus on the consumer. So many people focus on the one night stand. You need to look at cons uh, consumers and customers as a marriage. And Peter Thiel, uh, the co-founder of PayPal with Elon Musk said on an interview, they asked, how did you dominate the payment processor uh, industry? He said this simply, you want to dominate the sector and control the space. So, so many sellers are focused on going wide and launching so many different products so they can make the most amount of money. Where on my other hand, like I told you, we've done over 11 million with less than 12 products. I was able to do this because we dominate the sector. We can control the space by focusing on these one products, these niches, these categories, and becoming what's called a category king. Zig Ziglar, one of the greatest marketers alive, also said, uh, he was interviewed and he said, Zig, the interviewer asked, Zig, how do you dominate the marketing space? And he said, simply this, when the market zigs, I simply zag, right? So you want to constantly do the opposite. When you look at Apple, everybody knows when they see this logo, everybody knows this company. Everybody also knows Apple is expensive. Matter of fact, it's one of the most used 
uh, most used and widely purchased consumer electronic uh, grade product. And they're two to three times more than HP and Dell and all their competitors. And why? With no resistance. Because the customer buying experience, the customer service, the customer quality pa- the uh, uh, quality of the packaging, the quality of the merchandise. So the buying experience is better. There's less problems. There's less headache. Therefore, price becomes no resistance. So I always tell people, instead of focusing on charging less or offering more, Focus on the pain points. What is everybody else doing? Because they're neglecting those pain points and focusing on the bottom line. How can I make more profit? Now, you want to make profit. The goal is to make a lot of money. But if you're looking at that profit margin, that 30, 40, 50% profit margin, and everything's there and you have some room to invest more into your packaging, to invest more into your product, and you're changing and improving these pain points, now this becomes a competitive advantage. Because if everybody's complaining and saying, hey, Um, We wish that this was more durable. Now in your advertisement, new and improved, most durable, available. So now Mm. people don't mind spending 2 to $3 more when they're reading the comments and everybody's complaining that it's not durable. Or they may have purchased the product and they may have noticed that it's not durable and they wish it's more durable. So my um, my competitive advantage is very simple. Just like Zig Ziglar says, when the market zigs, you zag. Make sure you're at where you need to be at marginally. Make sure your product's going to sell 24-7, 365, irregardless of the United States, anywhere in the United States or in the world during the season, and focus on your customer's heart. Uh, focus mm-hmm. on the customer buying experience. So many people focus on their wallets and not their customer's hearts. And that's the way that you build a long-term relationship because we want a, a business that's thrived by longevity. I mean, Steve, my, my top SKUs have been selling for years. And the reason why they have is because our customers love our product. The customers love the buying experience. They love the customer service. No company is perfect. No company will ever be perfect. There's always going to be mistakes, returns, merchandise that's broken or malfunction. But the way that the customer feels during the purchase and the way that they feel during you know, an issue with the product is what's going to determine if they want to become a long-term uh, customer or not. And that residual business is how I've grown to eight figures. It wasn't through just a bunch of little transactions. It was those transactions and keeping those customers happy throughout Mm -hmm. the entire time. And I I guarantee you when you do launch another product, and I know you're not always launching tons of products because you're taking care of that, that customer base and that, you know, you're fulfilling your products and, and, and fulfilling your promises. But I'm sure when you do create another product within a line, you've got that brand right? You've got that brand. You've got those people that trust you, that know you, that like you, and they'll probably buy. They're called raving fans. So I'm so glad who here's taking notes right now, right? Put a, put a comment down below. Let us know that you're enjoying this right now because Josh is absolutely, wow. You actually have, <laughs> who's that by again? What's his name? This is by uh, Ken Blanchard and Sheldon Bowles. That's so cool. So hopefully you're all taking notes right now. And I do want to say, we are going to be giving away a couple gift cards. So if you guys stick around for probably another 20 minutes, I'm going to be giving away two Amazon gift cards to some lucky winners. So I want to know who here is taking notes. Let us know in the comments right now and who here wants to win a couple gift cards. No takers, no money makers. (laughs) Now I'm so glad, like I said before, that we're really pre-framing this because now we're going to go into, and I'll let you get set up, Josh. We're going to go into the software that you're going to be using to be able to find these products. Now, again, it's not all about just finding the best product that looks the best or it's the most popular or what you love. It's all about what we just talked about. It's about finding something that, you know, you can find a market and you can serve and you can improve and you could make it an amazing experience. So I want to know who's excited right now. I'm going to let Josh get set up and If you guys want to win those gift cards, do us a big favor and let us know in the comments you're pumped up for this video, that you're having fun. If you have any questions, drop them down below in a couple minutes. Smash that like button. Show some love. Get this video out to people. Again, guys, this is video number one of the four-day workshop. we got a video going down tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. We have a video going down on Thursday and on Friday, four days. So we're going through the whole process of the research phase we're going through the sourcing phase. We are going through, I forgot what phase three is, but I know there's a scaling phase. We got a whole bunch of phases. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. We're gonna essentially just take you through the whole process. And when everyone being home right now, what a better, I couldn't think of a better opportunity than right now to learn 
how to do this. So it looks like we got a bunch of people in the house right now saying, Kimberly saying definitely taking notes. Love the information, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. We got Matthew saying, I'm taking mad notes, smashing all the buttons. Matthew's going crazy <laughs> on the beach right now, just smashing the keyboard, going nuts. Carissa's having a good time. Appreciate that. Mary's taking notes. Regina's like, you know what? I don't care about the notes. Give me that gift card and I don't blame you. You know, Amazon gift cards are just like, you know, American dollars, right? Or any, any form of currency. So the freak 297, that's his name, taking notes, so pumped up. So Josh, let's not talk about what we're going to dive into right now in terms of the software that you use, that your team uses, that you teach your friends, your family, your students. Like, let's, let's go into this right now because this is the good stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me see how I can share my screen here. Um, if you do a, a screen share, I could then, uh, I'll be able to add you onto the screen. Okay, cool. Um, share you're... screen. Yeah. Uh, application window, Chrome tab. All right, cool. Got it. All right. I think we're good to go. And yes, we have been pushed to the side and now I think your screen is there. Let me just pull that smash the like button off the, off the screen and we're good to go. Cool. All right. So, uh, do you still see my face if I go on the other screen? Um, I can't see anything. Yeah, we can still see your face. Okay, cool. You can see my mouse moving? Yeah, we're good now. Okay, cool. So, this is a tool. Now, first and foremost, guys, there are a ton of different tools out there. So, you don't have to use this tool. This is just the one that I use by preference. It's called Jungle Scout. It's been around for a while. Um, and a lot of these tools do the same thing. They just look differently. So these are tools that are going to pull data directly from Amazon to um, help us find this data quicker without having to go through all these products, click all these listings. They do it by uh, scraping these APIs, right? So um, we're going to start off by go ahead and using the uh, product database. So inside Jungle Scout, there's all these different tools, but I'm just going to focus on a few and I'm going to kind of show you the flow of things of how I do product research and how to find these products. And then we'll actually go to Google Trends because I knew we were, I was talking super fast and I'll kind of show you the process and a few things that we're looking for. So um, Jungle Scout actually gives you some filters. So if you click on the button that says load filter set, you'll see all of these different presets and you can create your own. So if you mess with these filters and you're looking in a specific category or niche, you can actually save this so you don't have to go back and actually click all these different buttons. So since we're talking about high demand, low competition, let's go ahead and click on the high demand, low competition. We're gonna load these presets and you'll see that all of these filters are actually gonna be adjusted for us. And if we scroll down to the bottom, it's literally gonna show all of these products. So you can see 7,335 different pages and that's 183,369 different products. So we can literally scroll through all of these products in these different categories and find which ones that we think um, are going to be good products. Now, just to show you guys for um, time time's sake, right, we'll kind of go through the process. When you find a product and you want to learn a little bit more about this product, let's find a good one here. Um, let's see, replacement valve, replacement set. Literally dozens and dozens of products here. Uh, let's see. Let's let's go on the next page. Find something interesting here. Um, riding more blades. Wow, there's so many different uh, products here. All right, let's go ahead and click this one. So when you find these products, right, you can actually click on these products. And if you click this A button right here, it'll actually take you over to Amazon. So it'll take you over to Amazon. You can see the listing. You can see a little bit about the price point. You can see how much they're charging for this product, the entire listing. You can see how many reviews they have, how many ratings, and what they're rated. This is their BSR or best seller rank. So you can get all this information here, but then you can also use this Chrome extension. So there's a few different tools um, that we use. And what I want you guys to take from this, guys, is there's no right, concrete, step-by-step, cookie-cutter way to find products. There's tons of different tools. There's tons of different strategies. I'm going to show you a few here today. But the problem is so many people follow one strategy and they follow this cookie cutter strategy nonstop. And I just want to let you guys know that um, there's literally tens of millions of products out there, guys. And you just need to get in the rhythm. You need to get in the flow of doing your product research and make it fun. So many people um, make this this stressful thing where I'm going to get on today and I have to find this product. 
Um, don't stress yourself out. Less is more. Give yourself 30 minutes here and there, an hour here and there, and set the timer and have fun with it and make it a game. And when you do this, you won't get stressed out. You won't get burned out in this whole thing, right? Uh, so let's see here. Let's, let me go ahead and log in. Cool. Let me go ahead and log in here, and it should pop us up. Oh, forgive me, guys. Let me go ahead and pop this back up. I had to log in here. It must have been logged in on my laptop. So if we go back here, we can literally click on this Chrome extension here, guys. And when we click on it, it's going to pull all of this data up. And it's going to show us all of the data for all of the competitors. Uh, come on, computer. Participate. So there we go. Bear with me, guys, with the streaming and everything else up here. You guys can see I probably have 40, 50 tabs up here like a madman. I'm running three monitors, but... That's what uh, us crazy entrepreneurs do. But you guys can see it literally brings up all of the different products and all of the data in one place. So instead of going through competitor, through competitor, through competitor, and all these different products, we can actually see uh, we can actually see all of this data. So what we're doing is we're looking to see you know how many how many people are actually selling this product. And what I like to do, um, the main metric that I like to look at is the difference between the amount of reviews and the amount of monthly sales. So if you see right here, you can see monthly sales, 500, right? 678, 644. If you scroll over to reviews, you can see the amount of reviews. Now, um, by clicking on any of these, you can change these in chronological order. But what we're looking for is products that have high demand, low competition. And one of the ways I like to look at this is by seeing how many reviews to how many monthly sales. So the golden rule, and again, this isn't like a concrete rule, but the golden rule is to find products that are selling 300 units per month and uh, where a majority of the sellers have less than 200 reviews. So that's like a golden rule, but that thing can fluctuate. Now, um, another strategy I'll show you while I'm in here, guys, a mistake that people make when they're doing product research, because this product didn't look too crazy. Um, it looked like there wasn't a lot of demand and it looks like there was some saturation, but where people mess up at, guys, is they don't exhaust their search. So simply right here where you see buy art living, this is the name of the brand. But if you go down here where it says sold by, this is the name of the company. So by clicking on that company, it'll take us to their storefront. We click on their storefront. And now what this is going to do is actually show us all of the products that they have in their portfolio. So if people have been selling on Amazon for a while and they have a bestseller like this one right here, Usually that means they know what they're doing. I mean, this product has 1,600 reviews. They're a bestseller. They're a category king. So usually if they're launching other products, they know what they're doing. So what I like to do is I- Josh, actually, I don't, uh, excuse me, Josh. Uh, people are saying they can't, like you might be on a different screen or something, on a different monitor or it's stuck, they're saying. Oh, is it, is it not sharing? I'm not sure. Do I have to if, share? I can't go in between screens. Do I have to stop this and then share another screen? Yeah. Yeah, I think you have to stay within that screen because um, based on the way you shared your screen, you might have shared like the just that window. Got it. Okay, let me try stop. Let me stop sharing. Let me go back over here. My fault, guys. Uh, share screen. Sharing screen works best on your computer. All right, cool. Your entire screen. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll I do that. Maybe I just did window. Sorry about that, guys. So let's do this. You want me to just let me know when you're ready for me to throw it on the screen. Yeah, we're good. Okay, cool. Sorry about that, guys. This software is new to me. <laughs> Can you see it now? Can you see the different screens? Yeah, that's that's my fault. I should have noticed it. I was looking at all the comments, so that's that's on me. No worries. Uh, can we see now? Can you guys see me rotating screens? Yep. All right, cool. So I'll just recap on that. Um, did you guys see the? Did, were you guys able to see this screen and how we pulled all this data up? Yeah, the main screen, uh, but then once you uh, clicked into a product, it just brought it into another screen cool. that we weren't able to see. Okay, so yeah, we use this dashboard, and I'll just recap really quick. We use the load filter set, and we, we hit the low uh, high demand, low competition. It populated all these products, and we just use this um, iron display stand for an example. When you click on the little A button, it views it on Amazon. See, so you, you guys can see all of these metrics it shows you right here. But when you click the A button, it pops it up in Amazon. Um, let me see. Here it is right here, the original listing. And then what we did is we used the Chrome extension. So there's this little JS up here. If you click this button, it's going to pop up the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. And what this does is it populates all this data for all of the people, including this one listing who's selling this product 
under this search term. And we're able to see all of this data in one place. Now, one of the main ways that we determine if products have high demand, low competition, um, without getting into all this overwhelming information is just by looking at the amount of monthly sales, which means how much are they averaging per 30 days? And then the amount of reviews, right? Which is self-explanatory. So the golden rule is finding products that sell 10 units per day, which is around 300 units a month. And we want to see a lot of the reviews at under 200. So you can see like down here, this guy's got 85 reviews, but he's only got a hundred sales. So at looking at this data, this is not a product that I would recommend, right? Uh, without even going into Google Trends, just looking at the data. But what, what I was explaining before the, uh, the software mal malfunctioned is we want to exhaust our search. And this is a mistake that a lot of people make is not exhausting their search. So I'll show you exactly how to do that. Uh, one strategy, because we got a bunch of strategies to show you guys. Keep uh, coming. It's difficult to uh, to do it to do it like this, Steve. But I'll show you guys how to exhaust your search. So up here below this title right here, you can see the name of the brand, right? Well, if you scroll underneath the buy now button right here, you'll actually see the name of their company. So the name of their company matches the name of their brand, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it'll be Josh's brand and the name of the company will be Josh Co. So we don't want to click on the brand. We want to click on the actual um, the actual company. And when we do that, it'll take us to um, their actual, let me just walk, walk you guys through it again. When we do that, it'll take it to their seller dashboard. And when we do that, we can click on storefront right here. So if you click on storefront, it's actually going to show up all of the products that they sell on Amazon. And this is one of the ways that we exhaust our search. Because if we would have just said, ah, this product's not good and went back to Jungle Scout, we wouldn't yeah. have known if there was any juicy products in here. And if they're a category king, you can see they have a bestseller badge here. You can see this product's got 1,600 reviews. So that means they're selling a lot of these products and they're a category king. So they know a little bit about what they're doing. They're not new to this. So what I like to do is I actually like to go through their entire portfolio and do a search. So if we go and we click Jungle Scout again, what's going to happen is it'll actually populate all of the data within their personal portfolio. Wow. So now we can go and look at all of their products. And this is just one of the very many strategies, the cutting edge strategies that um, I use to exhaust my searches to make sure that we're finding these products because so many people just do this cookie cutter. They go into Jungle Scouter, they go into a software, they do a search, they find a product, they're like, oh, this product sucks. They go right back to the software and start over again and they leave all of this on the table. So we can literally go through all these different products and see uh, what other products they're selling. So if we go to monthly sales, we can click this and it'll repopulate it from ascending to descending order. So let's hit it one more time and we can see, okay, this is selling 4,000 units, 1,600 reviews, 1,300 uh, um, sales per month, 800 reviews. This one's got 600 units a month, 300 reviews, right? Well, what about this one? This one's got almost 300 monthly sales, 138 reviews. So this one looks like it's definitely got some room. This is a iron display stand easel foldable tablet stand, right? So completely different to what it is that they're, we found them for, right? But this product has some room. So this is just one of the, the one of the ways that we exhaust these searches. And that's when we're actually doing the search with the Chrome extension. We find a product, we go to Amazon, it doesn't make sense. Well, while we're here, let's actually go into the seller. And I'll show you guys another strategy that I like to use. And this is just one of very few. What I like to do is I like to go to Opportunity Finder under Find Products. And I like to do the completely opposite of what everybody does. Remember, Zig Ziglar says that when the market zigs, you what? You zag, right? Zag. So instead of finding products that have high demand, low competition, which is what you want, let's find products that have high demand, high competition that you don't want, which means nobody's looking for them. And let me explain the method to the madness right now, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this to, let's just adjust it to 700 to 1,000 monthly units, which is almost double what we're looking for, right? We don't worry about average monthly price. We don't uh, worry about monthly search volume. But competition from very low, let's go all the way to high or very high. Uh, medium, high to very high, right? And let's go ahead and hit search and have it pop up and populate these different products. Now you can see they're selling 3,000 units monthly, right? So let's scroll through these products. Uh, mass protection, stamps, uh, stretch elastic. What is this? Stretch elastic. Crazy. 
alcohol, liquid, three ply mask, a lot of mu- uh, masks and gloves. Yeah. And stuff. What's going on with uh, with the, uh, the COVID stuff, right? So if we scroll through. Okay, here, here goes one right here. Thermometer for adults. Okay, so Braun, that's a huge name. So we don't want to look at huge name stuff. Uh, Clorox toilet paper. <laughs> it's funny. All you see that's is toilet paper, mask, and gloves. Like the stuff that's selling like crazy. Kleenex disinfectant. It's oh. all sh- essential items. <laughs> Frying oil. Tomato seeds, right? Look at this. It's crazy that the product that you find. Um, you know there's someone out there crushing it. Literally, they're they're paying all their bills off tomato seeds. It's crazy to think, but it's actually true. Nuts, right? Let's go ahead and change this around a little bit. Kitchen and dining. Um Let's do office products, home and kitchen. Let's just click a few so I can get you guys some results that are not 3M gloves or (laughs) hand sanitizer, right? (laughs) All right, let's search this. Exclude top brands. And this should change things up. Uh, Okay, cool. Still seeing a crap load of masks and alcohol. That's the only thing selling now. Stage. Uh, It's just so popular with what's going on right now, right? Industrial toilet paper. Um... Let's see, shampoo. Uh, bear with me here, guys. All right, so for the example, I'll just pick any of these and, and just show it to you, right? So this is uh, Miss Myers Candles. So that's probably another huge brand. Miss Myers Candles. Yeah. Baby food, Glade Candles. We're in such weird times right now where it's like <laughs> – Search volume, average price. Absolutely, things are crazy right now. So what, what we're what we're doing is, guys, we're trying to find products that have super high demand, high competition, right? So I know one right off the top of my head. Um, it's kind of difficult doing this on the fly like this, but um, a super difficult saturated product is going to be a yoga mat, right? Tons of people are selling these products. Literally, tons of people are selling these products. You see the average reviews: two thousand, three thousand, twenty-two thousand. 4,000. So this is a product that you don't want to sell, right? But the reason why I was showing you this strategy is to find products that have high demand, high competition is to do that reverse engineer strategy, right? So what we want to do is we want to find the person who's selling the most amount of products. And once this populates, we can go ahead and actually um, repopulate this from ascending to descending order. It's taking its sweet time here. So many freaking sellers in in this thing. It's nuts, right? So monthly sales, let's click this once. It'll go to low. Let's click it again, and it will go to high. So, I mean, this guy's got 22,000 reviews. He's selling 16,000 units per month at $22. So let's just do the quick math. Like, let's just say he's making 30%, which is bare minimum. Let's just say he's making $7 on this, right? $7 times how many? 16,150. This guy's making $100,000 a month off of... uh, off of this yoga mat right here. So this guy's a category king. So what we want to do is click on him and go down to his actual storefront, right? And what do you know? Ship, ship by and sold from Amazon, right? What do you know? One of the biggest sellers is making all the money is Amazon, right? Let's, let's, <laughs> let's go back and try that again. That's funny. Um, 22,000. Wow. looks like the top guys are Amazon, right? Or they're, they're in seller, uh, they're in seller, uh, fulfilled by sellers here. FBA. All right, cool. Here goes one that's FBA. So if we go in here and we click in their store and we actually go into their store, we can do that reverse strategy, guys, to see what other products they're selling. And this is like my secret weapon. This is how I find really good products to sell is by letting these sellers do the hard work for me. So Mm -hmm. product research, guys, is funny because some people can find a product in one day. Some people it takes a week, a month because there's so many different products. So my very favorite and the most lethal strategy is literally going and finding the most saturated products on planet Earth by utilizing these different strategies, right? Like going into the opportunity finder, or going into the niche hunter or the product database and literally just changing the spectrum from low competition, high demand to high demand to find these products. And then we run in their stores and I want you to look at this. Like we found this guy from a yoga mat. But he's got a storage, uh, a bicycle storage bag. He's got a smartphone gooseneck mount. He's got a iPhone. What is this case? Right. I don't even know what this thing is. Neck holder, 
lazy mount. All these weird products, right? That are non-relevant. Here goes another one is a USB uh, car charging port. So I say this to say, guys, is you want to think outside the norm and you don't want to do product research with this cookie cutter strategy. You always want to be trying new things. And then again, what we do is just simply hit the extension and we're going to be able to see the metrics on all of these products. And you'll find it, you'll find it that a lot of these guys who are crushing it, who are category kings, they're launching new products. And if they're launching new products and they're testing new products, it's for a reason, right? So we literally piggyback off of these guys. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the reviews. Let's change these from descending order. So look at this, guys. 5,000 monthly sales with nine reviews. Just launched this product. He's making $157,000 a month with nine reviews, right? Let's go down and look at another one. 34 reviews, 999 monthly sales. This is a breathing exercise device. Has nothing to do with yoga mats, right? But he just launched this, has 34 reviews, 1,000 units he's selling per month. The price is 25 bucks. So 30% of 25 bucks would be, what is that, 750, Steve? So $7.50 yeah. times 1,000, right? Let's do the math because I suck at math. <laughs> Guys, he's making $7,500 per month profit with this one product. One and product now, away. One product away. So now what we would do, guys, is we would literally go and click on this product, and now we would do our product research with this product. So this is a breathing exercise device. Let's go ahead and copy this, open a new tab, and let's, uh, let's do product research on this product. So the key that I want you guys to see is there's so many different ways to do product research, and I have so many different ways to share with you guys, but the main key is number one, Make sure that you exhaust your searches. Don't just do a cookie cutter search and then give up and go back to exactly what you're doing. Make sure you're exhausting that search and you're looking through all the products. You're looking through all the competitors and then you're thinking outside the norm. If you're doing something and you're not getting results that you like, do something completely opposite and you'll get new results. So instead of looking for products with high demand, low competition, let's look at products with high demand, high competition, and then go into the stores and find new products and then reverse mm -hmm. search that. So then we just rinse and repeat. We'll go ahead and open up the Chrome extension and we'll look at all these different sellers. Uh, so it should be populating. This is so valuable, brother. Like I really appreciate you coming on the channel and you know sharing all this information on this workshop, man. I just, I can't wait for the next, <laughs> the next three because I just feel like there's been so much value. If you guys feel like you found value so far where you could actually go in start looking through Jungle Scout and start playing around and finding some uh, you know products, let us know in the comments. Yeah, I appreciate it, dude. I'm like, I'm sorry my computer's loading slow and like I'm all over the place. I've got so no, much good, stuff man. I want to give you guys. Um, so much value, man. Really grateful to have you on right now. Thank you. So here you go again, guys. Like this, this is crazy. Like we just found a good product together. So, and I'll explain. Right here, you can see like a top guys. Remember, when we click these buttons, we can repopulate them in chronological order from descending to ascending order. And you can see the brand names right here. So these are all different brand names. And what I want you to look at is the monthly sales. So we have 999 monthly sales, 34 reviews, right? Here goes somebody else, 1160 monthly sales, 35 reviews, completely different brand at $14. So if they're making 30% profit, that's 450 times 1160. I'm no mathematician, but they're making around $5,000 a month profit. And you can see this guy, 905 monthly sales, 65 reviews, 85, 85 reviews, 4,000 monthly units sold at $13. So this guy's making around five, $6,000. And the reason why I love this product before even diving into it is because breathing treatment is things that people are going to use irregardless if they're in New York during a blizzard or they're in Miami during the summer. Right. Mm. So, and again, just by looking at it, guys, this, this is a small product. That's probably inexpensive to source, inexpensive to package, inexpensive to ship. So now we've talked about depth of market, right? So really quick, let's go over to Google trends, googletrends.com, a free tool. So we find a product that we think is a killer, right? www. If I can spell here, we found a product that we think is doing well, right? What's going on here? We're breaking the internet. We're breaking the internet. <laughs> By the way, so many awesome comments coming in. Renee Lee just said, thank you so much for offering this 
uh, course, which is our free workshop we're doing right now, have learned so much already. And it's, it's only day one. <laughs> oh, dude, it's crazy. I got some game for you guys. So we want to take this keyword, guys. After we find this product, we do the data. We see there's a bunch of people here who have under 200 reviews making a crap load of sales. We want to verify and validate this product, right? So one of the first ways we talked about is Google Trends, a free tool, www.googletrends. We type in the name of the product. We hit enter and it's going to show us all of the historical data on this product. And this is how we identify, is this a trending product? Is this something that just hit the marketplace that has volatility? Because we don't want to gamble, guys. We want sure shots. We want products that are going to sell 24-7, 365. So this is a very simple, easy to uh, use tool where you see tw uh, 12 months. You can actually change this and it will show you the first time that it came up on Google, which is 2004. So let's go 2004 to present, right? Well, that doesn't give us much data, so let's go past five years. And when we look at the past five years, you can see that there's some fluctuation in this thing. So let's take it down a little bit more, and let's go past 12 months. So if you look at the past 12 months, you'll see that it's going up and down. It's pinging. So why is it pinging, right? It's pinging around July, June, July, September, right? And you can see it's pinging. So what we want, guys, is we want to see something that's going to be horizontal. We don't want a lot of volatility. So this actually, even though it may look volatile, is not a lot of volatility. And let me show you exactly what volatility looks like. Let's duplicate this. And let's type in the fidget spinner so you guys can see an exact, uh, <laughs> an exact uh, example of what volatility looks like, right? Let's do 2004 to present. So this is what we do not want to see, guys. So you notice that the historical data on the product that we just looked up, breathing exercise, there's some ins and outs, but historically it's pretty horizontal. We don't want to see any huge, huge inconsistencies like this, right? Let's go past five years so it'll bring it in a little bit more. And you guys can really see that. Wow. So whenever you see something like that, this is a direct example of something that is trending. So this product is not trending because it's been selling. We've seen for the last 16 years. Here's the last 12 months pretty consistently. The fidget spinner, this is a trending product. That means that there's it doesn't have what's called depth of market. And while I have this open, I'll show you guys what uh, seasonal products look like, right? Uh, Christmas... Christmas lights. There we go. This is a really cool tool. Yeah, and it's absolutely free. So this well, is a direct obvious. example of a seasonal product. So if you go in here, it's going to be November, December every single year, right? November, December every single year, and then it's dead. We don't want this. We want this. We want something that's going to consecutively be selling. So we know it's not a trending product. We know it's not a seasonal product, right? Now, what do we want to do next, right? What's next? Anybody remember? First, we see... Does it have high demand, low competition? Does it have some room? Check. Is it a seasonal product? Nope. It's selling every single month, right? Throughout the year, it has depth of market. Number three, it's not trending. We check that. Nope. Does anybody remember what's the other thing that we need to look into? I'm looking in the comments. I'm going to wait for somebody to answer it. <laughs> so the other thing, I can't see the comments, Steve. So I'm just going to go ahead and blurt it out. Go for it, brother. Um. Come on, it's making me log into uh, Seller Central here. I'll swap out of your screen, let you do your thing. All right, cool. Just give me one second. I just got to log in here. Yeah, no worries. So the last thing, guys, is we want to log in and we want to make sure that the prof uh, that we have the profit margin that we need. Right? Remember, thirty percent is the bare minimum. Cool to throw the screen back on. Yeah. Yep. We're we're good to go. Okay. I have a couple, uh, some people are saying get reviews. Some people are saying the FBA calculators. Some people are saying, can it be approved? Yeah, abs absolutely. So the, the calculator, I don't know why, like it froze and it threw me in there. Here we go. All right. Sorry, guys. It, come on. Don't pop up again. Oh, we're good. So yeah, so we checked, is it a seasonal product? Is it a trending product? Does the product have some demand, right? Does it have some demand, but not so crazy saturated? Now we want to make sure that we're going to make some money, right? So we want to search the product. And I'm just going to use this one for example. Or actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and use the exact one that we have here. Where is it at? Let's click on this one because this guy's crushing it. And let's use the ASIN. 
come down here, grab the ASIN, boom. I've got all these tabs open like a madman. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and exit out of here, and let's go ahead and put the ASIN in. All right, cool. So when we put the ASIN in, did you guys see how I grabbed the ASIN, by the way? I just scrolled to the bottom, and then I grabbed it. So this yep. is the listing. Scroll down here to the bottom. It'll say ASIN. Just copy this bad boy right here. Hit it in the search bar, and it's going to show you this actual product. And it's going to ask you some questions, being the item price, right? So the price charged to the customer. So let's just say we're selling this thing for uh, – how much How much were they charging it for? Um, 25 bucks. all right? So 25 bucks. I'm going to use whole number so this is easy. I know theirs was $24.99. Shipping. Shipping charge to the customer. So we're doing we're doing prime on that. So we don't we don't charge any shipping. Shipping to Amazon is the cost of shipping that the item uh, is is taken to the fulfillment center. So what we do, guys, is we go on Alibaba, we find out the cost of our product, we reach out and find out how much it's gonna cost to ship, right? But let's just go ahead and put 10 cents. This is a light item. And with um, the amount of times I've done this, guys, I can tell you this is pretty pretty accurate, right? It doesn't cost a lot of money to ship these products, especially when they're light. Now, the cost of product is going to be the cost of acquiring the product from your supplier. So how do we find that product out? Or how do we find that price out? We're going to go to Alibaba. You guys getting some value? You guys with me? I feel like I'm all over the place, but I'm showing, trying to show you guys all, all of this in one place. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the comments are great, man. People are really enjoying it. There's people saying, you know, I've got my homework. Uh, you know, they're taking notes, so they're they're sticking along, man. People, uh, you know, the 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 view count hasn't been going down. People have been hanging around the whole time, which is awesome. Awesome, brother. I just want to make sure everybody's getting value. I know I'm a little over the place. We had some technical difficulties, but I want to make sure you guys get value and you guys understand the gist of it. Um, so we want to go to Alibaba.com, which is like Amazon, but for suppliers. We literally type in the name of the product hit search, and we look for someone who has one that's similar to the one that uh, we're looking for, right? So here goes one right here. How many of you guys think that this looks similar to the one that we were looking at, right? Pretty similar? Yeah. All right, cool. So you can see here between 10 cents to $2 a piece. So if you're ordering, uh, let's see, one piece minimum order quantity, so 10 cents to $2. So let's just go ahead and call this thing without, you know, reaching out and emailing them and finding out an exact price. Let's call this thing a dollar. Safe to say, is that is that safe between $10 yeah, and $2 a fair. dollar? All right, cool. So let's go in here and put in the cost of the product. $1, right? Now what's going to happen is when we click calculate, it's going to calculate and it's going to show us what we're going to make on this product. It's going to fill in the blanks. So Amazon fulfillment fees is the processing fees, the fulfillment fees, storing the product, packing the product, picking the product. Because guys, Amazon, the beautiful thing about FBA is instead of you guys going and finding these products and you guys putting them in the boxes and using your own tape and printing out the label and sending it to customers, like I used to do with eBay, Amazon does everything, guys. We find the product we find the supplier. The supplier ships the product directly to Amazon. Keep in mind, guys, we're not touching anything. Then Amazon is going to pick the product off of their shelves, use their own boxes, use their own tape, print the labels, put the label on the box, send it to the customer, and even handle customer service. So Amazon is literally going to charge us $3.31 for the FBA fees, and it's going to break down everything, and it's going to show us, hey, uh, this is what you guys are going to make, right? So profit margins around 80%. Crazy, right? Let's just say that the cost of the product was four dollars, right? It said ten cents to ten dollars. Let's take it up to four dollars. If we take it up to four dollars, our margins are still stupendous, stupendous. So we're making seventeen dollars and twenty-five cents profit off of this one product. And if we go back to our search, uh, let's see which one has it open. I think it was one of these bad boys. Here it is, right here. So, guys, you can see this one seller has 34 reviews, is selling 999 monthly units, so basically 1,000 units. And you guys see the profit that we were making, right? So if we go back over here, we're profiting $17, even if the product costs us $4, which is more than we think, right? So $4, we multiply it by 1,000. This one product will make us around a $4,000 profit, right? That's tremendous. Is that pretty good? How many of you guys are cool? <laughs> How long? It take me like 40 minutes to find that? How long did it take me to find that, Steve? 
How do I yeah. get back to the yeah. chat room? Oh yeah. my God, that's ugly. <laughs> We're in the matrix. Oh God, hang on. I, I don't think you I've been out. drinking I... yet. Okay, all right, cool. So guys, it took more <laughs> maybe 30 minutes and I know we were a little bit around the place and we had some technical difficulties, but it's literally that simple. Um, we find a product that people are gonna use, a breathing treatment device. It doesn't matter if you're 40, you're 80, doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter if it's January or December, doesn't matter if it was five years ago or five years from the past, people are gonna need to use a product like that. So that's the type of products we're looking for. Number two, this product is small, lightweight, easy to source, cheap to source, cheap to ship. So our margins are going to be where we want to be at, right? You see, and even if we took it to $4, we were still at 60%, which means you could even double the cost again, right? Without taking the time and showing you guys the email sequence and getting the, um, getting the actual shipping and the actual price. But even if we doubled it again, we would still be at 30% profit, which is where we want to be. So we still have a lot of room um, with that. So once we make sure that the product's not seasonal, the product's not trending, people are going to be using the product, there's demand for the product. Then we go to Alibaba.com, we find the product, we find the supplier, we find out how much it's going to cost. We run it through the FBA calculator and we verify, hey, we're going to make that 30%. And remember guys, 30% profit is the bare minimum. A lot of my students and myself as well, we aim for 40 to 50%. So if you can get 50% margin every two units, you double your investment. 33% every three units you sell, you double your investment. And that's how you make money, man. And that's how you run it up. And keep in mind, Amazon operates 24-7, 365, irregardless if it's Christmas, irregardless if you're on the beach like me and Steve are right now, or you're at your, <laughs> your child's basketball game, this thing's working for you instead of you working for it. So Amazon's doing the hustle, not you, right? That is the research phase right there. Now, I want to know, okay, I want to know, first of all, who who loved the show? Who found a lot of value in that? If you did, do us a big favor and hit that like button right now on this video. Show some love. Leave a comment. And I also want to know, what's the number one thing you learned? I'm going to choose two people right now in the next minute. And I want to know, what's the number one thing you learned from this free workshop? Again, we have... Uh, three more videos in this workshop, and we do have a uh, an exclusive webinar, which does have limited seats. The workshops, anybody can go to the workshops. Um, they're 100% free. The webinar is free as well, but the workshop, as many people could come as possible. The webinar, there are going to be limited seats. It's not going to be here on YouTube and whatnot. So um, I want to give you a couple homework assignments. Number one, smash the like button. Number two, the first link down below. It's actually at the bottom of the screen as well. Register for our upcoming webinar, 100% free. Everything we cover in this workshop is literally just scratching the surface. We're going to really dive deep into webinars. So if you go to rakenprofit.com forward slash FBA training, it's the first link. Um, sign up for that. Also, the second link below it is the link to get notified for these workshop videos. So, you know, uh, Josh was talking a lot about the next step. So after you research and you find a product you want to invest in, the next step is you have to source it. So you have to go to Alibaba. There's a lot to know about that, which we're going to break down in tomorrow's video. So click the two links below, sign up for both of them so you can get notified. And then after the sourcing, the next day we're going to be covering the launch. How do you launch your product? And then fourth, how do you scale your product? How do you optimize? So hopefully you guys are enjoying you know, the, the value of this video. So what do you think, Josh? You think we should pick a couple winners right now? Give away some gift cards? Yeah, that'd be dope, man. I'd love it. All right, cool. So I'm gonna look through and uh, just find find some good comments right now. So bear with me for one second. Gotta pick. How many of you guys got some value? You got? Did you guys get some value? You guys kind of see like how easy? I know you probably feel like. You got blasted in the face with a water hose with all the information. We were all over the place, but I'm literally trying to condense hours worth of content into you know 45 minutes. So I hope that you guys seen this. And I've seen a few people, Steve, saying, can they rewatch this? I'm sure you'll be adding this to a playlist or something yeah. like that. So they can definitely see it. Yeah, this, this will be um, – there'll be a replay for this. The webinar that I'm talking about, which is going to be – it's hundred percent free as well, but which is really going to go in depth and we're going to, you know, just have some really groundbreaking stuff that we're not going to be able to leave up forever. That webinar is going down May. I'm not sure. Um, but it's, I think it's about a week or so. So there's a link uh, for that down May 12th, Tuesday, Yeah, May 12th. So that's going to be going down then, which I'm telling you guys, if you're finding value in this and you're like, why are they giving away all this information? Like we're here to help you guys. We're here to make a difference. There's a lot of people that are in need right now um, of, of an opportunity that actually works. And just so grateful, Josh, for you, man. Just want to thank you one more time. Like, thanks for coming on, man. Like 
this dude's doing over $3 million in sales. He's going to, you know, you're putting together another real estate deal and you're here helping the rake and profit audience. So much love. But with that being said, first winner, we got Brianna Edwards saying she learned, do not choose a seasonal or a trending product. So we covered Google trends. We talked about the seasonality and how we want to focus on a product that's going to sell all year long because you don't want to, you don't want to get into a product that, and I'm sure there's opportunities down the road once you're more advanced, but when you're first starting off, you want that consistent cash flow coming in all year long. So Brianna Edwards, you want a $25 Amazon gift card. What I need you to do is take a screenshot from inside your YouTube send us a message at rakeandprofit at gmail.com. We'll verify it's you. And then we will send you over, we'll send you over a gift card or a uh, $25 PayPal, whatever's easier for you. But either way, you're going to get that cash money. So what do you think, Josh? Should we choose one more winner? Yeah, it sounds good, man. All right, cool. Steven awesome. Shepard says, this has really helped me to think outside the box. Awesome, Stefan. We got Carissa coming through with tons of hearts, all types of hearts, birthday cakes, so many, so many, like Lisa is saying, so many good vibes right now. This is, awesome. the vibes are ridiculous in here. I don't know if it's the people or the beach or the people and the beach who are watching. This is just unbelievable. The Financial uh, Freedom Network. What's up, brother? Good to see you again. More bombs dropped in this video. Oh man, there's a lot. There's a lot of bombs being dropped in here right now. We got Regina saying we are learning a lot. Absolutely. All right, let's see. I'm looking I for I hope you guys got winner. your notes because this is just video number one. We've got three more guys and note takers are money makers. And if you think we went dive today, uh, dove deep today, guys, we're just getting started. Uh, there's so many comments. I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to find the second winner. Someone said 92 rental units. You got my attention, Josh, and you obviously have <laughs> – Good taste in friends. Oh, <laughs> well, just stop. Just stop. <laughs> hey, you know, your current situation isn't your first. Uh, your current situation isn't your final destination. When, when I found Steve and when I was on the other end of the screen watching Steve learning how to flip stuff on eBay, I was in one apartment and I couldn't pay the rent on that one apartment. I literally had to volunteer at Salvage, uh, Center Township to get vouchers to pay for the rent for that one apartment building while I was going Sunday on orange tags and yellow tags to get 50 and 75% off to hustle stuff. And I was literally pin tack, taking pins and tacking used clothing after I ironed it and selling it on eBay. And that's how I got the money to start my business. So irregardless of where you are, guys, your current situation is not your final destination. It doesn't matter where you are now. It's about where you're going, right? And the only way that you can fail, guys, is if you don't get started, you give up. I love it. Rosalinda or Rosalinda. I don't How do you pronounce that name? Ro, Rose. I'm going to call you Rosa. I love, I love your picture <laughs> as well. Uh, Rosa, I'm going to call you Rosalind. Rosalinda. Rosalinda. Come on. I see you salsa dancing over there, Steve. I know. I know. <laughs> I get nervous fun, sometimes. <laughs> I, you know, see a pretty girl avatar and I can't talk anymore. Uh, I've been quarantined in too long. I'm saying best thing I learned is how to look for products with high demand and few sellers. So we got we got the second we got the second winner right now, Josh. And uh, Rosalinda, send me an email, rakeandprofit at gmail.com. Take a screenshot. Let us know that you're the winner and we'll send you over that PayPal or that gift card, whatever you whatever is easier. So um, thank you so much everyone for watching. Again, there's two links down below if you go into the comments. One of the links is rakeandprofit.com slash FBA training. That is free, but that is limited seating. So that one, make sure you sign up for that. The one underneath it, which is our free four day workshop, there'll be replays for that. There's no cap in terms of how many people can show up for that. But if you want to be notified when these videos are going down for the next three days, then sign up for that email list as well. Again, they're hundred percent free. There's, we're not asking for credit cards or money or anything, just literally trying to get this information to you uh, for the folks that are looking to take that next step. So Josh, thank you so much for coming on and, 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 and so grateful for your time and for everybody watching live. And um, I really hope that this video added value to you. We'll see you tomorrow night. We're going to be talking about sourcing Alibaba suppliers, um, just really diving deep into that. The next day, the micro launch, and then after that, scaling to six figures and beyond or scaling to your first thousand a month, whatever it is you want to uh, accomplish. So Josh, thank you so much for you know, just coming and adding the value and, uh, any final words you'd like to drop? 
Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody shows up. If you guys thought this was great, guys, you don't want to miss the other three parts because the first step is finding that product. The next step is sourcing that product. The third step is testing that product and actually verifying that product works. And then the fourth one is skyrocketing and scale. So you guys don't want to miss any of the other parts. Make sure you guys come hang out with us and make sure you guys are taking notes because note takers are money makers. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Have a great night.